Hey guys, so before we get to the meat and potatoes of this video, I just want to let you know that of course, Black Friday is upon us, and that means discounts. So Maltronics has a 15% store-wide discount, so that's 15% off Maltwinos, Wi-Fi deauthors, Wi-Fi keyloggers, and of course USB protectors, everything. And not only that, but you get a free webcam protector with every order, so you just stick this webcam protector on your webcam, uh, move it back and forth and it'll, you know, slide and protect you so no one can see what you're doing. And it has a cool Maltronics logo on it, so I just thought that was something cool to add in. Um, so yeah, I'll leave a link in the description. It lasts till Tuesday, Maltronics.com, 15% off. Check it out. So, on to this video. So if you don't know what a Malduino is, you must be pretty new here. It's a keystroke injection tool, kind of like a USB rubber ducky or a bad USB. Um, but it's something made by myself. I have it on Maltronics.com, but you've already heard about that. So yeah, I manufacture them myself. They're not made in China or anything, not yet at least. Uh, so I thought it'd be interesting to have a look at how I actually make them, because I've never mass manufactured something like this before myself. It was something I, I had to figure out, uh, the soldering and all that stuff. So yeah, let's have a look at how they are all kind of put together, so to speak. So this is a fully assembled Malduino Elite. As you can see, there's, it might not look like there's much going on, but for someone who hasn't mass manufactured something before, there's a, there's a lot of learning curves, in fact. It's a double-sided PCB, so of course you've got one side here and the, the other side on the back, would you have guessed it? As you can see, it has got a full-size USB Type-A connector. A lot of people making something like this might put, um, say, uh, a PCB connector, so instead of having a, an actual, you know, connector it will just be part of the circuit board and you just plug the circuit board into the computer but I opted to go for a full size one. So yeah let's jump straight over to the panel. So every Malduino starts off his life as a single PCB in a panel. A panel is just a bunch of PCBs kind of uh, fused together I guess and they can be snapped apart pretty easily but for manufacturing purposes you want to keep them together and I'll show you why in a second. So it's essentially just the bare circuit board, both sides of it. There's not really, there's not really much going on here. This is as you get them from the, uh, the PCB manufacturer. So step one is getting your solder paste onto your Malduinos, onto your panel. If you've only ever done soldering with a soldering iron before, this is, this is well, very different to be honest. We're gonna be using a hot air station because when you're soldering very small components like this, you probably can't even see the individual uh, things there, it's something you have to focus on because they are in fact so small. When you're soldering onto these guys, it would be impossible to use a soldering iron, they're just so small. Yes, you could do it, but the end result would look absolutely horrendous and you might break a few components in the process. So we use solder paste, it's just solder, but in a paste and you just stick it on the board as and where, stick your components on top of the paste and then blast it with hot air in order to um, fuse those components onto the board. But it's a bit, um, well, it's a bit tedious doing them by hand because I don't know how many pads there are on this board. Like on each one, there's like probably like 60 or something. So doing it by hand, trust me, I've tried. It takes ages. It's just not gonna work. Um, you'll, you'll go insane before you get it done. So instead you use a solder stencil. So you stick your panel on the back of this thing and you get it to line up with the holes on the stencil and then you just swipe over your solder paste and take off the board and you've got a bunch of paste over where you want it to be. It's pretty simple. You see I've got uh, tape over certain parts of this and that's because I don't want to get any solder paste onto uh, where the dip switches are because the dip switches are a whole other thing that we have to do and we'll get to those later. I do those differently. So I've stuck down our panel onto the back of the, uh, the stencil here and as you can see if you look through the holes they're just all silver which is which are the pads on the actual boards there. So now I'm just gonna take my solder paste and deposit a few dabs on this panel here. Just a few. I usually use too much but uh, just enough there. And I bought a bunch of these from China. They're just disposable kind of YP things. <laughs> well, they're meant to be like the sample credit cards, I guess. I don't know, they haven't got chips in them, but you just kind of, this is an odd angle to do it. So this is gonna look stupid. Yeah, no, I can't do it this angle. So uh, 
roughly maybe 90 seconds later, I've deposited a layer of um, solder over the top of these, um, these boards here. Usually I have a bit left over, but we will need that for the other side uh, in a few moments. Well, I say a few moments, probably in an hour or so, because this, this whole process does take a while. It's quite time consuming to make Molduinos. But yeah, the only step left to do is take the panel off the back. And uh, I don't think I cleaned this, because ev after every time you use the panel, you do have to give it a very good clean with a, with a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol, because it's really tough to get the solder paste out of the holes. And I, I don't think last time I cleaned it around this area, so I might have to manually go in and dab some more on there. But let's have a look. And that looks pretty good. See, I'm being careful not to smudge any of it here. If you look closely, you can actually see we have a thin layer deposited there over all the pads on the board. Well, I say all, there is a bit of an asterisk there. The dip switches aren't done just yet, and the USB pads we have here aren't done. I do cover up those USB pads with uh, tape on the panel because we don't want to solder on them just yet. But a, uh, a side effect of that is some of these pads here, like this one is undone, this one isn't done, this one isn't done. That happens sometimes, but I'll just go over manually and fill in blanks where there, I don't think there is enough solder paste. So I fixed those anomalies or where there wasn't enough solder paste. And the next thing to do is get out my pair of uh, tweezers here and just start putting components on the board, which is, well, this step takes the most amount of time. I have a 3D printed little uh, set of drawers here that I made a while ago. I've been using this ever since to store my components. Uh, I need the first three drawers for this. So one, two, you have to be really careful not to drop them because if you drop them or even just tip this thing, they'll go everywhere. It's not the best of solutions, I will be honest. So these are all the components we'll need for this top layer of the board. I think we're running low on a few of these and some of them are in the wrong uh, like section. So if anybody in the comments is like, those aren't capacitors, those are... Yeah, I know, I just put them in the wrong thing because uh, like as long as I know what they are, it's fine. It's, it's chill, guys. And it's not like I thought they were something that they weren't. I just did it by accident. So these are what the uh, components actually come on. They're reels. And the idea is these will go in a pick and place machine, like in a, like in a big industrial machine, I guess. You stick them on and they'll automatically feed through. But I'm doing it by hand, so it's a, it's a lot more fun. Um, let's see, these are 22 picofarads. We've got 22 ohm resistors and then a bunch of crystals. So I'll just fill these up and then we can get to picking and placing the, the things, I guess. So now I've got those components down and I just need to stick them on. You see, the, the one thing that really um, is kind of inevitable when manufacturing stuff is it just makes a massive mess everywhere. I mean, this is, um, those are from the reels and you get, ah, and the boxes, ah, it's terrible. But um, yeah, it's good fun. And that's one of my socks. So, um, that's most of the components down. The last thing I need to do is just get the main chip, which is the Atmega 32U4. So I'll just go and get to my tray of those. The, uh, the main chips themselves come in a, a tray like, like that. Um, there's probably a, a couple grand worth of uh, chips on there. But yeah, it's the same thing, just uh, pick and place without a machine. Sad face. See, the worst thing is when you drop a tray like this on the floor or just nudge it. Because even if you nudge it slightly, these chips all come out of their place and it's a massive pain. I mean, worst case scenario, you might br even break a few of them if it's a really bad, uh, it's, it's a really bad fall. Okay, so now the pick and placing for this side of the board is almost complete. The next thing I'm going to do is hot air this onto the board. I need to fuse the components down. <laughs> Just gonna put these components away first though. So the hot air machine I'm using here is the Katsu 852D+. It seems fairly decent. It was only 50 quid off eBay, but um, 
Yeah, I'm not sure how much I trust it. I mean, it's a random Chinese brand. I'm pretty sure you can find these exact machines just with all kinds of brand labels stuck on them. So um, tread carefully. And of course, if you're doing this kind of work, you need a uh, fume extractor, which I've got here. This is just one from uh, Maplin. Rest in peace, lol. Um, but yeah, it is going to get quite noisy. I'm using it on the minimum um, air thrust setting at 400 Celsius. This is kind of arbitrary because the temperature is affected by how far away you are from the board and the, uh, the amount of layers on the boards and the amount of, you know, uh, there's just so many factors. So if you do get one of these things, just like play around, I guess. Just try not to burn yourself. I am on a uh, heat resistant mat here atop a, a wood table. So I, I am safe. I am safe. Yeah, I'll just let that get up to temperature, switch this on, and probably put some music over this because this is uh, going to be pretty loud. This is all soldered down. You will notice that the, um, the hot air station is still making a noise because it, uh, it needs to cool down before it will actually uh, turn itself off automatically. So just waiting on that. So everything is all soldered down. The only thing left to do is that you'll notice if I bring it to the side here, hopefully you'll see this, is that you do get a lot of uh, solder bridges on the at Mega chip itself. If I turn the ISO up, you can actually see things. Ah, look at that. So you'll notice here, for example, we've got some solder bridges. Okay, so I've put a bit of uh, solder paste on each side of every single chip there. And now I'm just going to go over it with my soldering iron. Let's make sure, because one thing that's the most terrible thing ever is that, uh, so soldering irons have different tips. You can unscrew this here and change the tip. And I have a bunch of tips. All my tips. But the worst thing is when you turn it on, get the soldering iron to 480 degrees and just realize that you have the wrong tip on and you have to wait for it to cool down to change the tip. Worst thing ever. But yeah, I am gonna be working with 480 degrees here on the soldering iron, which is actually quite high. So 480 degrees is actually very high and you would never want to apply, well, as, as, as I can see, you would never want to apply 480 degrees directly to the board. However, I always use 480 degrees with this soldering tip because it is so thin, I find you lose a lot of temperature by the time it gets to the tip. So I do put my soldering station on max for this one and it seems to work fine. But on something that's a lot more short and stubby, like this guy, um, like a 350 maybe, it seems to work and <laughs> they don't break generally speaking. So I, yeah, I find this works fine. Right, so <laughs> those are the bridges, the solder bridges sorted out. I did actually rip up a pad by accident on um, this Molduino here, the fourth um, pin in from the right there. Uh, I'm not sure if, yeah, you won't be able to see that, it's so small. But um, I'll check the PCB schematic, and um, but we should be fine, because most of these pins on the Molduino, well, on the chip themselves, aren't actually connected. Well, I don't know about most, it might be 50-50. I can't remember, but... Yeah, I'll have a look and we, we should be fine. Right, so I've just had a look and that pin missing is absolutely fine. It's unconnected. So the next thing we need to do is deposit yet more solder paste for the switches, for the set of dip switches that go on every Molduino. So I actually do that by hand because I, I find it doesn't take very long to be honest. So I'll just do that by hand. Put on some switches. Where are they? There they are. Yeah, there we go. Probably need some more actually. I've got a few one position switches mixed in there from the Molduino lights, of course. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so those are the switches on. Um, as you can see, they're not perfect. Some of them are wonky, that's because. Um, well, they're not meant to be on perfect just yet. So for this bit, I will actually uh, grab a 
glove because you'll notice, well actually I don't know if you can see on the board, but um, there, is actually, uh, there is actually a ton of flux on the board and that's just um, the result of soldering really. It's just kind of like a residue that's left over because the, um, this solder paste is actually part solder paste but it has some flux in it, I'm pretty sure. There's some, well it must do because the board is messy, like it's sticky, it's very sticky. And um, I don't want to get my fingers sticky, so I'm going to put a glove on. And uh, you'll see later on, I do have to clean the Malduinos because they're just sticky all over <laughs> before I send them off. Okay, so that is the whole first side of the PCB completely done. Um, it's very fluxy, you'll probably notice if I zoom back in. Um, uh, focus, there. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's very fluxy, so at this point it needs to be cleaned, and at the same time I'm going to clean the panel, uh, remember, not the panel, sorry, the, uh, the solder stencil, because if you leave that long, it becomes crusty, and then when it becomes crusty, it becomes very hard to clean. So I'm gonna grab another glove here, glove myself, oh, actually I've already got one, because we're going to be using isopropyl alcohol to clean the things and I find if you use if you use isopropyl alcohol without wearing gloves um, your skin will start to fall off so gloves are kind of uh, mandatory. So for this part of the manufacturing process we need to zoom in in onto my crotch and clean some Malduinos. So I've got my isopropyl alcohol, uh, my cleaning cloth, and the most important implements, a toothbrush. Because it's, it, I, I haven't used this toothbrush, I bought it with the purpose of using it to clean the Malduinos and stencils, because um, yeah, that'd be kind of odd if I used it. Anyway, let's, um, let's get to cleaning some Malduinos. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's pretty much done. Um, I should have done it before and after, really, so you can see the diff. Like I was saying, I should have done it before and after, but you can actually uh, see how clean they are. Like, there's no flux on there whatsoever. They're pretty nice and ready to... Oh, no, I need to clean the that panel. And then we'll um, to the bottom layer of um, this PCB. Okay, so I've cleaned the panel and I've stuck our, sorry, I've cleaned the stencil and I've stuck our panel on the back here. And this is going to be um, applying a solder paste, uh, sorry, a layer of solder paste to the back side of our panel of Malduinos. So this side of the panel will have um, a lot of the voltage regulation stuff. And of course the micro SD slot to, well, that's where you put your scripts. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a layer of solder paste to that. And there we go, one layer of solder paste on our panel. Perfect. So like I said, the back of the Malduino is mainly for voltage regulation and the micro SD cards. There's really not much else going on. So uh, there's just an array of um, capacitors. So let's go and stick those on. So that's the back panel fully put on thing. <laughs> All I need to do now is uh, hot air it and then manually solder on each of these micro SD connectors because those you can, uh, I find if I try and use hot air on these micro SD connectors, I'll end up melting them. Um, but yeah, I, I just prefer to do it with, um, I just prefer to do it manually, just, just from my personal experience. I didn't realize as I'm filming this, my, my mic was muted, but I was just talking about how they're 
they're almost done, I guess, and I'm just uh, snipping them off and how the noise is very satisfying, but I guess you you won't ever hear that noise of me breaking them apart because the, the mic was off, so that's that's sad, but but yeah, um, I was just saying, talk about how they're very satisfying to look at when they're almost done, and uh, they do take uh, quite a while to make. I've been here for about an hour and a bit now, but it has taken slightly longer because I'm looking at the camera every five seconds to make sure I am in focus and still in the frame, but at this point, I just need to wait for this soldering iron to cool. I need to go in and solder each of the pins individually in here that connect the, um, well, that actually um, interface with the micro SD card because while the reader is on, the pins that interface with the micro SD card are not yet soldered. So that's something to do. So yeah, let's do that. <laughs> So I have soldered on the uh, the microSD. Oh God! I just got a blue screen on my uh, on my computer there. That's uh, that's inconvenient. <laughs> I just got a blue screen that I'm filming. Oh dear. Let's uh, let's proceed with talking about this, and I need to. Uh, I hope that my computer still works because I need to um, flash the bootloaders. Um, but anyway, where was I? Right, so I've soldered on the micro SD connector and all the pins in there. So the next thing to do is to burn the bootloaders, assuming my computer is fine, fingers crossed. Then I need to separate these from the one by five little, whatever you call it. And then solder on the USB connectors and then test them, make sure they're all working fine and then clean the flux off them and then we're good, and we're good to go, and then they can be shipped. So to burn the bootloaders, I'm using an Arduino Uno, and um, it's just through the Arduino IDE, I don't really have a, uh, a great setup for this. It's just stick the Malduino, uh, it used to be the other way around there, stick the Malduino on there, hold it for a couple of seconds, hit burn bootloader on the Arduino IDE, and then we're good to go. Uh, so yeah, I'll just do that if I can open Arduino. Right, so bootloader's flashed. Now I just need to break the guys up. Okay, so this step is actually kind of cool-ish. So I need to solder on the USB connectors. If that would focus, that would be brilliant. I need to solder on the USB connectors to the... Um, Maltuino. Now, when I started making the Maltuinos, I would just kind of stick them on and try and put them down and solder them, I guess. But it, it never worked. They would always come out wonky or uh, just 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 really just really wrong. So I designed and 3D printed this little um, kind of brace here. So the idea is is you take your Maltuino PCB and it fits in uh, there. You take a USB connector. It goes in there, if I can do this whilst looking at the camera, maybe not. It goes in there and it holds it just perfectly so you can solder down the USB connectors. And then when you've done the USB connectors, you can take the thing out and solder the anchor points on the back of the PCB. Pretty proud of this. I, I lost the design files for this, but I made a bunch of them, like 30 of them for the Mildwino Elite and Lite. So um, yeah, they come in real handy. Right, so finally, the Maldwinos are um, hardware-wise done, uh, essentially. Uh, the Maldwinos are finished. The only thing left to do is test them and clean them. So they're somewhat presentable, because you won't be able to see, it's quite, uh, it's quite detailed, but there, um, there is quite a bit of flux on them still. And um, they have got these batch numbers on the back of the micro SD connectors, which I do my best to get off like that but yeah um let's test them so i have my uh trusty little 3d printed um micro sd card enclosure here which is actually pretty cool so inside here i have my sd cards i use to test the Maldwinos. i use this one um so you notice i've used this micro sd card so much if i can zoom in that's uh i don't know whether you can see that 
the back of it <laughs> has start to the back of the plastic housing has come off so you can actually see the uh the metal underneath but yeah it's um it's a pretty dire situation so to test the Arduinos, i'll plug them in uh, with that micro sd card inserted in the back and then i'll upload this test script i have uh pre-written and it's essentially it's just a normal Multuino Elite script. It will read off um, whatever's on the micro SD card in the back here. But then it will go into a mode where I can test each of the switches to make sure they'll work. So if this uploads here, I'll hopefully be able to show you uh, what I mean. So it's written the scripts. The script was really simple. It's just a dot, just, to, just so I know the Multuino is able to read from the micro SD card. And then I can just toggle each each switch and it'll just write one, two, three, and four. And it does that just so I know that each of the uh, switches is working properly. And then I rinse and repeat for all the Maldwinos I've just made. So now that the Maldwinos have been tested and found to be working correctly, the only thing left to do is clean them. So uh, make sure the soldering iron is of course off and everything is off because I don't want any uh, any um, fire. I do have a, uh, a fire extinguisher on the, well, just to the left of me, but um, hopefully I won't be needing that because isopropyl alcohol is rather flammable. So yeah, let's get to cleaning these guys. A um, bunch of Arduinos done, all packed up, ready to be shipped off, I guess. Um, that's that's all there is to it, guys. It only took me, I think that was about uh, three hours, but that's, oh, wait, no, hang on a second. Uh, yeah, no, three hours, but I was filming, so it took a bit, so that adds time to it. But yeah, let's zoom in on here. So we've come a long way from the, um, the panelized PCBs to, um, the end product, which is um, the Multuino. It's all cleaned up and ready to go. So yeah, this is, this is the end product. It's very, it's very satisfying to uh, finish a bunch of Maldwinos and then uh, I have to spend a few hours packing them up and shipping them. But yeah, it's, it's a very satisfying process. So if you want a piece of Satanic history, 15% um, off Black Friday, head on over to Maltronics.com. I will be getting these made in China soon because it's becoming uh, just such a, a time hog, I guess, making all of these. And with Black Friday, it's going to take even more of my time. So yeah, I'm going to get these made in China soon. So if you want something, if, if you want something that I personally have had a hand in making, uh, yeah, Maltronics.com. <laughs> so thanks for watching, guys. I can finally take these gloves off and have really clammy hands. I guess I should get to editing this, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this. I hope I shed some light on um, how Maltwinos are made. I know this was a well-requested video amongst a few people, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to slap that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, stay tuned for more hacking videos. Have a good one.